1st January 1943, World War II was breaking out. Adeline Pertot brought her third daughter, Mara Hertog, to Amina Binde Mohammed for caretaking. Adeline was to pick up Mara two to three days later. Sixth January 1943, Mara was now returned to Adeline. Adeline borrowed a bicycle and set out to find her daughter. She was interned by the Japanese because she did not possess a pass. From an internment camp, she smuggles a letter to her mother to get her children to her. However, Mara was not among them. Her mother told Adeline that Amina wanted to keep Mara for two more days before bringing her to Adeline herself. In late 1943, Mara was circumcised and given the Malay name Nadra Binde Marov. She and her new family moved to Jakarta for unknown reasons. They then moved to Kermanman because Mara is white. She had to speak only Malay, wear Malay clothes and practice religion devoutly. In 1945, World War II ended. Adeline's husband, Susan Adrianus Petrus, her talk, who was captured by the Japanese during the war, was released from the prisoners of war camp and reunited with his wife in Java. He immediately requested that the Dutch authorities in Java and Singapore to find Amina and Mara. He and his family then returned to the Netherlands. In September 1949, Amina and Mara were traced to the compound they were living in. The next year, in early 1950, the Dutch consulate offered $500 to make up for Amina's expenses in bringing up the girl for eight years. Amina rejected the offer and refused to give up her foster daughter. On 17 May, the High Court ruled that the custody of Mara be entitled to the her talk. A car was waiting to pick Mara up after the ruling. Mara clung on to Amina and shouted in Malay that they would rather die than separate. She had claimed that she did not want to return to her biological parents. Only after Amina agreed to visit her lawyer with Mara did Mara enter the car. The lawyer said that Mara had to be given up before they could make an appeal. The duo burst into tears. Mara was sent to York Hill for temporary safekeeping. The appellate court found ambiguity in the Dutch Council General's representation of Mara's natural father. Because of that, Amina and Mara could be together and were overjoyed. On 1st August 1950, Mara was married to 22-year-old Mansour Adabi, who was then a teacher in training at the Bukit Panjang Government High. Mara returned to live with Amina after the wedding night. Only a day after the marriage, lawyers representing the Hertogs delivered a letter demanding the return of Mara. By 10 August, all legal action will be taken. Believing that the marriage settled the matter, Amina and Mansour both ignored the deadline. But, on 26 August, summons was taken out by the Hertogs against Amina, Maria, and Mansour. On 20th of November 1950, the judge, Justice Brown, held that the marriage was invalid because under the Dutch laws, Maria had to be 16 to be married. Justice Brown was concerned about Maria's future and therefore awarded the custody of Maria to the Hertogs and to be handed over to her mother immediately. When a policewoman had to pick up Mara from Amina, Amina fainted on the spot and Munsua promised to fight back for her. Mara then entered the car. Mara stayed at a convert for a few days after the verdict. Photographs were taken of Mara surrounded by Christian faith. Muslims were horrified as they treated Mara as one of their own. On 11 of December, the appeal hearing was made. Since morning, crowds carrying banners and flags with star and crescent symbols began to gather around the Supreme Court. Unbelievably, the court threw out the appeal within five minutes. Muslims felt that the colonial legal system was biased against Muslims. The riots erupted. The riots continued for three days and a curfew was imposed for two weeks. The mob overturned cars and burned them. The troops and police only managed to gain control of the situation by noon on 30th of December.
Mario was sein Bett zu Netherlands für Mathe.